Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 518, Testosterone Replacement After a Hysterectomy Protects Women from Heart Disease. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Testosterone replacement after a hysterectomy protects women from heart disease. That's a a bold statement. Why are we making it? We're making it because we have learned from the research that is available to us that women who have had a hysterectomy are 300 times more likely to suffer from a heart attack as they age than women who have not had a hysterectomy. So if you're an aging female and you've never had a hysterectomy, then this conversation isn't really for you. But if you have had one, it's something that you need to be aware of. You need to be aware of the increased risk that you will experience for having a heart problem and dying from it. But there is hope. There are things that we know that can reduce that risk. And the most prevalent thing that we can do, a predominant thing that we can do, is replace the hormone testosterone for women. Women who replace their testosterone are less at risk to develop heart concerns uh, after hysterectomies. They they go back to a normal range. Okay. So, first of all, the women that come to me who have had a hysterectomy, whether they had their ovaries removed or not, are the most symptomatic patients of low testosterone. They are miserable. I have pe- For this very reason, I have many people fly in from all over the country because they can't get their doctors to understand that they need something more than an estrogen patch. It is a, something else they need. They need to have the testosterone replaced. But more than that, they start getting sick. Not only do they have all these symptoms, they start getting insulin resistance, prediabetes, all the things that set you up for heart disease. And in this, this um, study that we read um, and that we are quoting, we have found that if you've had the hysterectomy of e- with or without your ovaries, you're at more at risk for heart, dying of heart disease. So many, many times more. But if you take testosterone, and they didn't, they didn't even look at taking estrogen, if you take testosterone, then you go back to a normal risk that a woman who has not had a hysterectomy, not had her ovaries removed, you would, or not had not had her ovaries removed, you'd go back to normal risk for heart disease. So taking testosterone really is the answer for people who have had their their hysterectomy or ovaries. So you replace the testosterone, but you also replace estrogen. uh, estrogen. If I can. If they've had if someone has had breast cancer and they have estrogen receptors, Mm -hmm. we don't want to make any cells grow, so we tend to follow the directions of their oncologist, which is no estrogen. There are some women, the exception is if they've had both breasts removed, completely removed and reconstructed or not reconstructed, but all breast tissue is gone and they had negative nodes, then we can give them some estrogen. But testosterone is the key to most of the complaints that women have after a hysterectomy and, it, I mean, that was what shocked me. I'd been doing hysterectomies for years right. when this happened to me. And when I had my ovaries out and my uterus out, I was overwhelmed with uh, symptoms and feeling terrible and gained weight. And I, I, it just was, it was like I wasn't in my own body. So we didn't discuss this ahead of time. But I remember that we've, we've had discussions about new perceptions that doctors have, new information that's available about women and heart attacks, that mm-hmm. women don't have heart attacks in the same way that men do. They, they're, the they're not as recognized. That's what mm-hmm. I was trying to get out. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so could you talk a little bit about that? Because mm-hmm. heart attacks are the most frequent killer mm-hmm. of aging women. They 
are. And and what you believe and, and know is that one of the primary reasons for that is the lack of testosterone. Mm -hmm. But if you replace the testosterone, and if you can give the message, you do. But if you replace mm -hmm. the testosterone, you reduce that risk significantly. That's right. But women who are susceptible to heart attacks, what's that going to look like? How will I know if my wife is having a heart attack? Well, you have to know what a man has first because that's what... Mm -hmm. What a man has when he has um, a heart attack is generally he's going to have, he'll have chest pain like an elephant sitting on his chest. He'll have pain down his arm. He may be short of breath. He may feel like his heart's skipping beats. Those are the things that the, a man would have. Right. But a woman can have, she, it can feel like indigestion right below her breastbone. And she can, she can think it's that and mm -hmm. put it off because, put off going to the ER because of that. But she usually doesn't have just, she could have arm pain, but sometimes she has jaw pain. Sometimes she has pains in her head or other places in her body that don't really say heart. So it's not typical. So we call it an atypical presentation of heart, dis of heart attack. So if <laughs> she usually would be, somebody would be a little bit of short of breath. Mm -hmm. But honestly, sometimes it comes and goes. You start, you know, you have some damage, but then you kind of recover on the way to the ER. They look at you. You don't have all the symptoms a man has. They send you home, and then you die of a heart attack. Right. A, you know, a progressing I mean, heart attack. So this is important for women to know because when an ER doctor tells you that you need to go home and you are still short of breath, you still have pain here, you may have pain in your jaw or, or pain somewhere else, usually shoulder or back, tell them you're not leaving. Until you have, I mean, I'm serious. No, I know you, you are. You don't have to leave when, a, when the doctor says you leave. You say, I'm having a heart attack. I know I am. You need to test me, keep me on the monitor, watch me, send me for other tests, even a cath. You need to know that that's not a heart attack because it's very common that women are sent home more often than men and die at home of that heart attack that is misdiagnosed. So before you leave, you need to know you're not having a heart attack. Right. And if the doctor says, oh, it's not anything, it's indigestion, you need to ask them to continue to test you and monitor your heart mm -hmm. to make sure that you don't have a heart if attack. If it's indigestion, they should give you something for indigestion. If it goes away, then it's most likely indigestion. If it doesn't, it's most likely your heart. Okay. So those are the things you should know about heart attack, but but, but you, you were this... Pardon me? You were telling me that women who have had hysterectomies come to you mm -hmm. with this litany of complaints and mm -hmm. concerns, and that typically they've been to an average of five other doctors they've, they that they've gone me. to before they found you mm -hmm. and not felt as if they got any relief, got any improvement in their Sadly, circumstances. Sadly, they feel demeaned. They are told that they're crazy or they're just lazy or they're fat. That's why they have all these symptoms. Mm -hmm that their hysterectomy had nothing to do with it's this. It's just what happens to a woman when she gets yeah, old. Yeah, you're just old, no matter how young they are. <laughs> I mean, they're, I mean, I was told that by experts that I had, had you know, admired prior to mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And they treated me like I was an idiot and just said, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with you. You're just getting old. And I was 47. Well, I'm 65 now. And 47 looks pretty darn young to me now. And it did then, too. I wasn't getting old. I needed testosterone and I needed estrogen that didn't fall off, like the patches fall off if you exercise or move around. So I needed something that actually gave me long-term replacement of my hormones and they didn't figure it out. And these poor gals that come to see me, they're, they're literally broken because psychologically they've been told they don't understand what's wrong. They don't, what they perceive is not right. What they perceive is in their head. What they perceive is something that is not true. Or that life just happens and you got bad luck. This is happening to right. you. It's not your fault, but there's nothing to be done about it. Mm -hmm. So just suck it up. Right. And that's, and that's also not helpful because then they're hopeless. Yeah. So when the, somebody is hopeless and, so, and comes to you, they, I mean, usually when I hear their symptoms, and they're usually mostly testosterone loss symptoms, but hot flashes, night sweats, and a dry vagina, that's estrogen. So I hear those complaints, and I see that they've gained 20 pounds since last year, and 
they've had all of these different problems, like their skin's sagging, their hair's falling out. I, I'm like, I've, I see this every day. We're going to fix this. So, so let's run through the estrogen symptoms, the presentation mm-hmm. complaints that they Low get. Low estrogen. And the testosterone symptoms. Okay. All right. For estrogen, mm-hmm. uh, hot flashes, dry vagina, painful intercourse, loss of hair in the front of the head. Like right here. Lack of sexual response of vaginal lubrication, lubrication, bladder spasms with urine loss, like if they cough or sneeze or laugh. That's stress incontinence because you're stressing your bladder. You're okay. pushing down. So that's stress incontinence. But mm-hmm. irritable, and Which is the next one. Right. Which is the next one. But irritable bladder is because there's not enough estrogen. It's an est- estrogen-sensitive organ. It, it gets thin and is even irritated by the urine that's inside the bladder. So the lining isn't as thick as it used to be. So it just spasms like this. And every time it spasms, urine shoots out. Right. So that's one of the things that when we give people estrogen, they're like, oh, my gosh, I don't have to take all those medicines for my irritable bladder because now it's fixed. Don't have to wear the pins anymore. Right. And they can go to, they can go work out without worrying about peeing on themselves. Right. I mean, that's a, that's that's a a huge worry. It's a huge embarrassment. Because if you've got gym clothes on, there's not really room for you to put on a diaper or a pad or, yeah. and, and this is not a man, man problem. Usually generally, unless you've had prostate surgery, you don't have incontinence. So this is, I mean that, so this is clearly a woman problem, but Estrogen really does help that. So women who come in and say to you, these are the problems I have, right away you know you're looking at an estrogen issue. And then how do you know for sure? You do a blood test? I do a blood test. I already have the blood test in front of me by the time they come oh, in. Oh, so you have a heads up before so they I get there. So I have a heads up. But generally, when I mean, if, they, if the lab didn't get there and they had these symptoms, I know what to treat them with. Right. Plus, if they've had their ovaries removed mm-hmm. or they've had a hysterectomy, I know that they're probably low on both estrogen and testosterone. Right. So even without lab, which I don't I don't like and don't usually do, in an emergency situation, I would be able to treat them. So you have a woman come in and she says, I've been to five different doctors. They all tell me the same thing. It's my fault. I'm just getting old. Life happens. Whatever. How do you give them hope? What do you say to them? You, you already know because of your experience and your reputation, I know what to do with this. I can mm-hmm. make you better. How do you communicate that to them? I, I tell I apologize for their other doctors not knowing this, but that this is something I do every day, all day long, and this is common. It happens very frequently after a hysterectomy, and it gets better. All my patients get better. This is not going to be something that they are going to be hopeless about, that they have to deal with the rest of their lives. It is something that's going to be better in four months. And even in the worst cases, in in six to eight months. Well, and, and Dr. Moppa won't tell you this, but I will. If you try this treatment, which is the injection of testosterone pellets in the, the fat tissue of your hip, you will experience positive change. If you stop trying it, you'll go back to what you had mm-hmm. before. So you can tell very quickly, very readily, mm-hmm. does this work for me? Does this help me? Does it not? In In real time, with real symptoms, for your body, you'll know. So if you just wait a little bit too long, usually pellets are given to women every six, or every four months and men every six. Mm-hmm. If you wait too long, your symptoms come back. And oftentimes we'll have people say, I felt so good. I just didn't think I needed them anymore. And then, they, <laughs> and now and then <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, yeah. they waited an extra two to three weeks. Mm-hmm. I have to come in right now. Right. I mean, I need them, you know, cause they then get to experience what they were experiencing before. Right. And it, the symptoms come back faster than like the weight or, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Usually the symptoms that, um, of testosterone loss, like lack of libido, usually uh, their husbands see this. Yeah. You, you and can, complain about yeah, it. Yeah. You can go through the, the list. So, if you like. so if the presentation is low estrogen, we've already talked about the symptoms that they present with. If they're presenting with low testosterone, these are the things that they will say. And then Dr. Maupin and her nurses will know we're looking, and plus with the blood test, mm-hmm. we're looking at low testosterone. Loss of libido, sexual dysfunction, fatigue, insomnia, weight gain that they cannot diet away, that they cannot mm-hmm. work out and get rid of. And they complain about, I'm just getting, my clothes don't fit anymore, my stomach is too big, I weigh too much. And they're really angry because they, they can't fight it. They don't have a There's, weapon. Yeah. And they assume, well, it's because I'm eating. They starve themselves or they, they mm-hmm. don't eat the things that they like. It's, it's really 
difficult. Lack of an ability to remember names and places. Lack of motivation. Arthritis. Generalized pain. Loss of muscles. Loss of physical stamina. Migraine headaches. Now, migraine headaches from a loss of testosterone, testosterone. are distinct from other types of migraine headaches? I'm, yeah, I'm there's asking. A, there's I don't a know. lot of triggers for migraine headaches, like the weather changes. You can get a migraine from that. You can have a tension headache, and, and that might trigger your migraine headache. The ones that I treat with testosterone are the ones that happen usually at menopause or after, or starting at like age 36 as testosterone's getting too low, and they start getting progressively worse as testosterone drops. Uh -huh. um, those, are, those are the migraines that, that are helped by giving back testosterone. Other symptoms, hot flashes, depression, anxiety, Rapid aging of the skin. What are you yeah. looking at? Crepe? All kinds of wrinkles and crepey skin. Yeah, it looks, it just, everything sags. So your face sags. And testosterone helps you not have crepey skin yeah. and wrinkles? Yeah, because it, it actually holds moisture in, in your, um, in the skin, or in the uh, tissue that's right below the skin. Mm -hmm. So it keeps it plump. And it, it also increases the collagen thickness. So when you lose testosterone, your skin gets thinner and thin skin kind of sags. When you get your testosterone back, it gets thicker and it, it, it has more uh, tension. It holds itself up better. So you say the, the skin gets thinner. And without one of the things, without testosterone, and one of the things that you talk about as a symptom that women suffer from is what you call old lady bottom. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, well, it happens to their bottom, too. It happens to their skin. You know, they get jowls and things start ha hanging. Their arms have the have things, you know, the skin that hangs, right. uh, no matter how much exercise they do. Uh, and then old lady bottom is when, you know, you have a nice behind, and then all of a sudden there's like this, this drape of skin underneath your butt, and it's just sagging, and it may have uh, cellulite as well. Okay. So that's that's lack of testosterone, and it might be lack of exercise as well. But most people don't want to go put on the clothes that you used to exercise with it, their bottom hanging down. You yeah. Know? So yeah. they often are shut down that way. And then two others: hair loss, uh, all over not their just head. in the front of the head, yeah, all right? Over. All right. And then uh, clitoral shrinkage. Right. So. And that comes back to normal yeah. with testosterone. Everything comes back to normal with testosterone. And that's so, what you need to hear. Yeah, and yeah. the clitoral shrinkage makes it hard to be stimulated or to stimulate yourself. And the hood of the clitoris covers the whole clitoris, and, and it isn't um, large enough to, to be stimulated. So that's, that's the sexual problem that has to do with that. Um, one of the things, I, I wanted to give a brief example. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had a patient who's, this past week who has been to nine doctors all over the country, including Mayo Clinic and, and, and Cleveland Clinic, because right after her hysterectomy, took her ovaries and her uterus for a very good reason. She had endometriosis and it was terribly painful and she really needed to have it out. There was no other treatment. So she had it and right afterwards she developed migraines. She'd never had them before. Migraines every day My, and true migraine headaches, not tension headaches. Migraine headaches, like one side of her head, her eye felt like it was it was pulsing out. She couldn't look at the lights. She'd have to wear a cap to keep the light out of her face anytime she went into a public place. So she's wearing a cap and a mask. And she's she has gained a lot of weight. But that's that's not why she had this migraine. And the migraines caused her to be nauseated, unable to work, unable to even do her stuff at home. It's been three years from her since her hysterectomy. She's had this three years. And every doctor that she saw made her feel worse. They treated, they ignored her symptoms. They treated her for uh, um, psychiatric disease. They, and then she stopped taking those meds. They, she, they treated her for migraine headaches, meaning your blood vessels dilate, so they gave her uh, vessel constrictors, which then elevate your blood pressure, but they gave her those things, and that's the only reason she was even able to come to my office. When I saw her, I could tell she had a migraine right then because she had her eyes squinted and she had her head down like this, and so I immediately turned the lights out. I said, this is better, isn't it? And she goes, oh, yeah, I can't have the lights on. She's been doing this three years. All these doctors, nobody ever looked at testosterone, and she 
that's all she needs. They gave her estrogen, but oral, and oral makes a lot of estrone, which makes it worse. Right. So, so they didn't even give her the right kind of estrogen, which would be a patch or a vag tab, a compound of vag tab or a or sublingual uh, tab. They they just said, th- you know, this is one of these other things. Gave her tons of other medicines that didn't work. So when she walked in, she was typical. She had all the other symptoms of low testosterone as well, but she was so deflated, and so and I could tell that she used to be an athlete. She used to be very a very strong woman. You could see it come through every couple um, minutes. She'd get a li- <coughs> little kind of energy to her voice, and then it would go away. Right. And I I just said this this I've seen people like you before. I have had lots of people with migraines of this nature. And they go away. Your ovaries came out. You got migraines. Nobody even thought about giving you back what your ovaries used to make. So what kind of lead time are you giving her? How how soon will she feel better? Well, pellets take about three weeks to come up to speed. But the worse you are, the faster you feel it. Oh, okay. So, like, I slept the first day because I had no ovaries, no uterus. but, But I hadn't slept in, you know, a year. And... I, that first night I went to sleep, I thought it was a mistake. Mm. I mean, stayed asleep. And then the next night I, I continued to sleep. Mm-hmm. So I felt it really fast. I think she will as well. Um, but generally to get to a really good blood level, it's three weeks. And then, so her migraine should go down dramatically and easily could be gone in the first couple of months. And so that's incredibly good news for her and for other women like her. Mm-hmm. But what we want you to take home from this conversation today is that it also significantly reduces the chance that you will have heart disease mm-hmm. as you age. Because women who have had hysterectomies as they age are more likely to have heart attacks and die from them than anything else. So protect yourself and get your testosterone replaced. And then the the number one cause of death will not be your cause of death. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.